Kathy Dirksen. Kathy, thanks so much for joining us today. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's been amazing so far. All these conversations going in so many different directions. It's hard to know where to jump in, but. <laughs> well, thank oh, you. You'll, well, do, you'll do fine. <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll basically help us down a new path. So, Kathy, uh, you know, of course, where we want to start, though, is to learn a little bit more about you. So can you tell us just a little bit about who Kathy is to get things started? Well, it's funny because as Jeffrey was just finishing there, he mentioned the magic of life. And oh, I think I did, but that's not okay. Quite, okay, well, sorry. In that conversation, as the two of you were going back and forth, but... And I'll warn you now, my puppy is home. It's a, it is a holiday over here too. And she can't go to daycare today. So she's home. <laughs> she's, <laughs> what kind of puppy? Uh, she's a poodle and Swiss mountain dog. So she's about 45 pounds of bounce. So, <laughs> so just to warn you. I like 45 pounds Oh, that's cute. But, like so, that. so, but to kind of back up as to, I mean, who I am, what I'm doing right now is kind of a, uh, everything's kind of come together. But this point about the, the magic of life, I consider I've been a biologist my whole life. And from a tiny child, I was always collecting living things. My pockets were full of worms. My, you know, as I got older, my room was full of every kind of living creature you could imagine. And so I've always been fascinated by the magic of life. And as I went through school, my my education in university was in biology and genetics. And I think that's what drew me to genetics was really that magic that we'll never really understand. And it's like Jeffrey was saying too, there's so much that we could never understand. It's beyond anything we can right now really incorporate in our thoughts and in our minds. So, so that's really the core of who I am is that one that just fascinated with the magic of life and how we find that magic. And so about, so I actually worked in medical genetics for about 25 years. And it was about 10 years ago that I went through a major life shift, went through divorce and realized at that time, the job I was doing just, it was a very toxic environment. So I was leaving a toxic marriage, realized my job was also toxic. And I literally threw my life up in the air and reinvented it on the way down. And I'm, I'm a big believer of intuition, listening to your gut, listening to those messages of what's your path, where should you be going? And at that time, it led me to realizing that I needed my, my kind of core of what I needed to do was to help women create a life that they loved and to help support them in different ways. So to be more of that people person. And yes, my dog, she agrees. And so at that time it came to me that she's like, just let me get in your lap. <laughs> she, she's a bit big and I've got the virtual background on too. So if I, if I move, everything moves <laughs> and she does not like the green screen. And, <laughs> but, but yeah, so, so about 10 years ago, just kind of in, in that, phase of literally throwing my life in the air and reinventing it, I came to the feeling that financial planning was where I needed to go because I felt I needed to be that one that women could come to for information and that support because I heard from, I mean, so many of my friends were going through divorces, going through major life changes. You know, here we are in, you know, pushing 50 and starting all over again. And I just found that finance was a place that women just really got stuck and didn't, you know, weren't able to move forward. But so spent the last 10 years working in financial planning, different corporate things, but again, came to that, that, that intuitive knowing that I was in the wrong place still, that I was doing the right kind of thing, but I wasn't in the right place. And, you know, realizing that working in the corporate world, you're, you're very confined by what the rules are, who you're representing, what you're allowed to talk about. And in my mind, there's so much that has to go into any kind of, money conversation that has to happen way before that. So that idea of what do you actually want to do? What are you actually planning for? Like the, the numbers don't mean anything if you don't know what you're planning for. And so that's mm -hmm. where my intuition kind of told me again, okay, you need to move in a different position here in this conversation. So now what I've done, uh, actually pretty much a, exactly a year ago now, I left my corporate job, walked away from my financial planning world and into my own world. So in my company, I call inspired tenacity. And 
to again that came to me kind of in an intuitive feeling that to me that's what we need for any major life change we need that intuition of what do you want but then we need that tenacity to just keep at it and to be inspired inspired is the key when it's an inspired yeah. action it's a game changer exactly and the word that fits in the middle there that i always like to add is courage but that would be too long of a name. So Inspired Tenacity is my company. And so what I'm doing now, I mean, obviously finance is intertwined with everything. So I can help people with that. But what I'm really helping people with is that other stuff before that, that what do you want? What are you holding your back, yourself back from? And focusing mainly on midlife women, because I find so many of us have lost track of ourselves. We don't know who we are. We, you know, we've given so much to so many people for so long that we've lost track of both ourselves and often our ability to receive. We're giving, 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 but we almost like the, the guilt of receiving, we're not doing it. So I'm trying to take women back into that thought of what do you want how do we create the life you want and bring all this stuff together? And I just love where the conversation has been going this morning with all the talk about epigenetics and neurology and quantum physics. And because again, getting back to that magic of life, so much of it's intertwined in all those things that in our culture where we're taught to not think about that those aren't real. And that's, and I think Jeffrey was talking about that too, that, you know, that, from a, a biological state that 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 the instinct goes back so far and i, I think mm -hmm. lisa was talking about it earlier too but with the epigenetics talk about grandparents and what we actually learn and carry from our grandparents and so mm -hmm. just all these different things i just love bringing all of that into the conversation because we have stopped thinking about that and i find right now so many people are just feeling stuck I think this whole, you know, dealing with COVID and all the rule changes for the last two years has definitely just left people exhausted and overwhelmed. And so, so right now, that's really where I'm focusing is my, my programs. I focus around the words reignite. So reignite your life because I find so many of us are just feeling stuck. So it's, I know it's kind of a, a roundabout kind of swirl of all these things but i just love how it's all just intertwined and fits together so so thank you both for kind of well, having it's this inspired not all morning <laughs> but it's inspired okay. and so but the, i think it's important that you have such experience right that you're bringing to the table exactly and this is now your focus exactly. you just shifted focus yeah. you don't you know sometimes well, exactly I, yeah, exactly. you're not if you don't say, Well, that's so totally different. How are you doing that? And now you're doing that. Like, what are you doing? They don't see the connection, but it is all connected. It's all intertwined. Well, you're bringing all of this to the table, right? So exactly. they're getting like this whole package. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so yeah, no, I just love this whole conversation that that you, the two of you, have been having today. It's just wonderful. <laughs> well, to that point about people not seeing the connections. I get asked a lot of times about the, and, and it's more from people that are struggling with it, that they're what I might call a, a multi-passionista or a multi-passionite, uh, you know, people that are passionate about multiple things that are related or they're doing them without realizing it for something that's going to happen later on, you know, that they're going to merge them somehow. And they come to me and say like privately, you know, Corey, I see you juggling multiple things that look separate and yet you seem to be so happy and you seem to be actually juggling them. Okay. And they seem to, the ball stay in the air or whatever. And I think that's a misnomer. I think that's a myth. People think that you can't have multiple passions, but I will say this. Um, ultimately, what I seem to find is that almost always they do eventually somehow come back to connect. So for example, people used to say to me, well, people didn't see how being an author, it, now people see it more now, but being an author, uh, being a speaker, being a musician, being a comic, like all those things, how do they connect? But here we are X amount of years later, and now I'm guiding other people how to be an author, how to be a speaker. And so maybe I was doing these multiple things so that eventually I could help people uh, maybe impact more lives by becoming an influencer. Well, that's just it. And I think when you put it all together, that's all about you putting your message out in so many different ways, because every single one of those is about you sharing your message. 100%. And 
people didn't see that at the time. So like the same thing you're saying, people don't necessarily it's their see perspective. It. Right. And they don't have to, to see it. What, you know, and you could take that whichever way you want, meaning like, you know, what do they say? Uh, what people say about you behind your back is none of your business. None of your business. I mean, <laughs> the truth is they don't have to see it as long as you, and it, I mean, you don't even have to see it necessarily because eventually it'll show itself. But I really do believe there's a reason why when somebody has multiple passions, that's happening. You know, it'll, it'll be revealed later. We don't know how the universe is going to work around it. But I, so I think it's awesome that you, you have multiple things that might not seem related to somebody else. Exactly. And that's funny too, I guess like 10 years ago when I started on this kind of, again, reinventing my whole self, I actually had come up with the mission for my company at that time. And I've carried that on. But then my mission in my company is to create a cycle of wealth and success among women around the world. And so when I went into corporate financial planning with that mission, that's where I got really stuck because I was so stifled by what I could do. And I really couldn't have a global impact or even a national impact. I could really only focus on the province I was in when you're dealing with those kinds of services. So it's funny how even back then I already had this bigger vision of where I was going. And, and Corey, it's funny that, you know, ever since I've kind of met you, it's, it's been really amazing because it's really kind of opened my eyes to that bigger vision. So again, when I first shifted a year ago, I was focusing more about that. I would just be coaching. I'd po coach groups and one-on-one, -on -one. but the, the more I kind of interact in your community, the more I realize how I have a bigger vision. I have a bigger message and now the idea of doing speaking, you know, whether it's virtually or traveling the world and, and really having that bigger, bigger, bigger kind of vision and impact has really become more real. So to thank you for that and kind of just exposing me to all these new people and all these new ideas and just these opportunities, you make everything look so simple. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's part of it. We have to look at it that, yes, this is not, a, this is not difficult. You just go do it. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you a good book to check out if you haven't already checked it out, Kathy. And this is for everybody listening. Uh, it was a struggle for me. I grew up in a small town. I was kind of told, you know, my grandfather always said, say yes to everybody and figure out how to do it later because he was, you know, great a carpenter, yeah, yeah. great education. <laughs> and, you know, it was more thinking like, you know, just locally and, and maybe smaller. Whereas as I got older, I was like, I want to think bigger. But I didn't really know the fact that it would be just as easy to think big as it is to think small. Like there's yeah, no extra yeah. work involved. But there's a great book that I think people should check out called The Magic of Thinking Big. Okay. Have you ever heard of it? It's called The Magic of Thinking Big. And I believe, if I remember correctly, it was written in like 1950-something. So we're not talking like a new book that's been out in the last couple of years. This book's been around a long time. But a lot of thought leaders have credited the book with, it, with helping them get that big vision and realize, wow, it's no, it's no harder. The exact same uh, process and fundamentals apply to think really big or small. It's really just up to what your goal is. But anyway, so I just recommend you check out that book as well. Okay. Do you remember who the author is? Jeffrey something. At least if you want to jump back in, I'll go grab the book so you guys can see the cover. Sure. Okay. It's funny that you said you, that you're that you're recommending the book like the big thinker or the big thing. I started reading because I'm a big I'm a huge I'm a visionary in a world of limitless possibilities. I've always yeah. been, I mean, really that's I see it. I, it's and it's big, but it isn't big. It just is the vision. Like so, yep. there's no size in the vision that I see. Exactly, it's an idea. It's inspired, and it doesn't. It doesn't have a size necessarily, even though to some it would seem grand. But I would ask somebody to recommend a book to me, just like an audio book when I'm driving or whatever. And it was called My The One Thing. Mm -hmm. Did you ever read The One Thing? I have it over there. Uh, what an amazing book, because really, because I have the same challenge that you've been having is people are like, you're all over the place. You have all these ideas and through all these, I see them all tied together as one, yeah. right? Well, you have a recipe. If you have a recipe, if you're eating something, right? It's all different ingredients. It's not just one thing, your recipe. It's That's made right. up of spices and herbs and proteins and vegetables. And right. So the, that whole thing is one signature dish, but it the signature dish has all these ingredients in it. Exactly. But what I realized when I listened to the book called The One Thing is that you have a one thing. Like you're actually you're actually operating from a one thing place, but it has all these different arms, right? That one thing. And that is 
when you were doing your first job, it was like the magic, tapping into the magic, like recognizing that we live in a magical place called exactly. Earth or the yes. world. Yes. And we have this opportunity in these incredible bodies to be able to move through this magical place. And we actually have an ability beyond what we're taught or what we can see. So I believe your one thing is recognizing in the magic and that magic just changes. Oh, yep. Exactly. One thing. Yeah. I love it. it. It was a game changer for me. It helped me recognize that, that I might show up in the world as being all of this, but I'm operating from the one thing, mm -hmm. which is yeah. recognizing that we live in a limitless possibility and helping people tap into that, whatever that means for them. So if it's through recipe development or starting buying old motels and flipping them into retreats or coaching and speaking oh. and creating businesses and startups and brands for people like all of these things that I don't talk a lot about on um, cuz I don't want to confuse people I sh I'm the fl I'm the founder of flip your script coaching and that's how I kind of show up here um mm -hmm. on this platform but behind the scenes what it what inspired flip your script coaching was recognizing that we do live in a world of limitless possibilities seen and unseen known and unknown and I have been gifted the ability to help to have a knowing and help people tap into that. So you have your one thing and that's, you said it when you, when you came on stage, it was that you saw the magic in the world. Well, yeah, that's, that's a good well, segment. You, magic. you guys want to know that uh, it was written in 1959 and the author, can you see that? David Schwartz. David Schwartz. Schwartz. It, I like this, the back, he says, set your goals high, then achieve them. Uh, but it's it's just a, it's a great book that helps you with the idea again of, of just it, it it really has a way of showing you that it's not that hard to think big goals. But the other thing is I'll share a super quick story on the one thing. So I got the one thing the book a while back. Um, then I start listening to the podcast, and so here's a cool story. I mean, it's a story that for people that always ask me, how did you get this and how did you get that? Like how did you meet this person or what have you? The one thing I had this wild story that I wanted to get on the show. So I reached out to them. I, I should grab the email sometime and, and show it. But uh, they basically came back and said, how familiar are you with our show? And I waited a couple of days because I was on a speaking tour and I had the book with me. I was reading it with me. So what I did was I went to my last venue because it had the biggest audience. I get everybody all together piled in the room. And the one thing they used to do this like that, that was the thing they did uh, on the show um, on the video version. Anyway, so I got everybody together and I held up the book and we all did this. So it was like 150 people or 200 people or whatever, all doing this. And I sent them the picture and I said, this is how well I know the book. And they replied back and said, okay, we'll send you the link right now. You can schedule your spot. <laughs> but that's how I got on the one thing. Brilliant. Massive action. So anyway, I just want to share that. So and just different, like Jesse Itzler, he's, he, he's, he does this, those kind of things too. Like he'll like show up at these huge conventions and not even buy a ticket, but know that there are mastermind events and buy all the donuts and all the muffins in the morning. So there's none left because he noticed that all of the, all of the attendees went to this one little coffee place. He bought them all out and stood there and went up to, he had handpicked. This is when he started his airline or private jet company and he went and said hey you want a muffin you want so he just he was just there before and after the event and he did the same kind of thing he knew everybody wanted muffins he bought all the muffins and that was his ticket to success with the how, muffins and the donut that's, and how, that's, he that's how he met everybody he would he wow. gave them he didn't sell them he just handed the donuts out said hey you want one and then had a conversation hey you want one so he was the donut muffin guy in the morning because he, he, he bought them all out do you know do you know who he is by the way Kathy? Jesse Itzler. The name. Jesse Itzler. He's Sarah Blakely's husband, but yeah. That's, that's oh, okay. Gonna that's what nope. I was going to say most people uh know who Sarah Blakely is, so if you don't know Which who is he is. Which is funny, right? Yeah. Hey, who but, doesn't I mean, have Spanx at our age? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> I never <laughs> bought a pair of Spanx. <laughs> Wow. They're, they're, they're a big deal. I'm not going to lie. To I you. know. Well, I was kayaking the other day and I saw this girl with these like leggings that kind of looked like um a wetsuit material because they were a little bit thick. And I was like, oh my God, I've never seen those. They're cool. She's like, they're Spanx. Oh my God, oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. They're, they're like, the they were kind of like thicker material. I don't know. They were leggings. Yeah, I guess suck it all in. Spanx yeah, well, leggings. I'll say, Blakely's made a, a little bit of money with this, this little thing called Spanx. So she just moved. Her, her story is amazing. Yes. 
Yeah, it's pretty wild. But I mean, so they're, I mean, they're definitely a unique couple, that's for sure, like doing big things. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so I mean, those are the two books. I want to make sure, Elise knows this. I, I have this library here where as soon as we mention a book, I want to, so people can see it. Yeah, and know it. yeah so, uh, but that's, yeah, so I, I love it. Uh, first of all, the one thing I love that you talked about that, Elise, uh, because I do believe it is about the one thing uh, for, you know, I think it, it doesn't have to be, but for some people, it makes it easier. To have that one thing and and i also by the way for those this is just random but i don't know why i think of this book but a book called push by shailene johnson for those that are struggling with adhd uh this is that's what her whole brand is about now she's the one that created turbo jam if you ever heard of that craze it was the fitness video sold six million dvds through beach body uh so the same oh beach body i think i heard i don't know well they're they, what they're most known for is shailene uh tony horton the p90x guy and then sean t uh, what, what was his thing called? I forget. He's the like the booty body guy or something like he's anyway, he's got his own thing. But those three people. Oh, his first one, Sam, the insanity work. So anyway, those are the three guys that built Beachbody. But yeah, definitely. Um, Shaylee Johnson has this book called Push. And she talks about all you have to do. So this is like one thing. All you have to do is figure out what's your push goal. What's the one goal? If you knock this domino down, it'll knock all the rest down. So, for example, if you write a book then you'll get on more stages, you'll get on uh, more media and all this stuff. So she says, you know, all you have to do is pick three push goals instead of trying to accomplish 55 goals. Anyway, just put it out there. It's a good book. Very good. There. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I have a question. So let's say, so let's say that I wanted to work with you. How would I find you? Or would I even be your target market? Like, I guess yes. I am. I'm like, well, midlife, I'm thinking our, 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 uh, our uh, age is definitely the target market. You, on the other hand, though, I would say not because you are someone who's already following your passion and is already giving yourself permission to reach out and connect with what you want and what inspires you. You're doing it. So my target right. market really is women our age that are stuck in, say, jobs that they hate, that they've been doing for 20 years, and they just feel like, well, I can't do anything else now. I'm too old. I'm not going to start all over again, even though... I mean, I keep asking people, what do you think is the, what's the real cost of staying stuck where you are? You hate it. Mm -hmm. You're angry all the time. The cost isn't just income. The cost is your relationships. The cost is your health, health mental health, physical health, health from every perspective. So when you think about the impact of staying in a lifestyle or in a situation that is really just stressing you and anger anger is something that women don't talk about you know we're not allowed to say hey i'm just angry mm -hmm. and, but i find so many women that are stuck in those jobs or in relationships that they hate or just situations that they hate that that's what they're doing They're I, I describe it like they're banging their head against the wall every day you know and that's what i was doing in my last job Every day was like, oh, you know, and I could feel my blood pressure. I could feel my body just saying, get out, get out. <laughs> but I find so many women aren't giving themselves permission to mm -hmm. think beyond that. So that's really where my target market is, is those women that are just letting themselves stay stuck and right. killing themselves, really, when you think about it. And I was mentioning the other day on one of our Blue Talk chats that uh, I've, I've kind of shifted the wording that I'm using and really decided that words like disruptor and catalyst really are what my one needs to be. So not, you know, coaching and, you know, just it's very fluffy, but just disruptor. Like I need to be that disruptor that just give your head a shake, snap out of it. So that that's mm -hmm. really where I'm going as I, you know, really kind of take a bite out of what I'm focused on accomplishing here. Again, that that bigger vision, that bigger shift of wake up, get out of there, mm -hmm. you know. And and sometimes it's just a matter of going through a process where we remind ourselves what we did like about that job or what we, you know, what we are good at. So sometimes mm -hmm. it doesn't require huge transitions, transformations. It's just a reminder almost. And other times it it will require a big shift. It will require you to move to a different career, find a different relationship, completely change your life in some cases. But again, I'm, I keep reminding people too, we have to plan to live into our 90s. 
So if you're in your 50s and early 60s and you hate every minute of the day you're living, mm -hmm. like what what are you setting yourself up for? And even what kind of role? And what model? are you and what are you really mm -hmm. afraid of? I was just having a conversation with one of our guests here. And we call all we I, I almost called her a treat. When you come in state Manatee landing retreat, we realize that everybody who comes here is more than a guest, but they're not quite a friend yet. So you become our treat. You're our treat people. And then when you come back, you're a retreat. So we have a lot of, we bought it last year and we have a lot of retreats already. So that makes us, makes our hearts sing. Um, but we were, yeah. So I was having a conversation with, with one of our treats and she had been in the job for 40 years. I mean, she didn't even look old enough to be in a job that long. Like I didn't ask her her age, but she must have been a little older than me or started really young. Maybe it was 35 years. And so she was telling me that the reason she was staying was for health insurance. And I reminded her that yeah. it's medical, it's medical insurance. Let's just be clear. I always said it's not health. It's medical. You're paying. And, and, but there are, and I'm like, okay, but what if that wasn't the issue? And I wasn't even really like coaching, coaching her. We're just sitting out back on her way out. She was saying goodbye and I'm posing the, what if that wasn't the issue? So then all these other things came up, but my daughter just, you know, like the, so it's never like the one thing that people think it is. Cause once you say, well, well I'm just going to remove that. Cause I have a solution for you, which I do. I have a solution. Anybody who's staying in their job for <laughs> medical insurance, I got the solution for you. So reach out, but, and you still have medical insurance on the right path. But anyway, it wasn't even about that. You know, it was, she told herself for all these years that those yeah. were the, re that was the reason that she was staying in this position. And now this is like the one, the other, then it was like her mom and her mom's like, she's still got to stay there. I'm like, so, so what are you really afraid of? You know, like. Exactly. Just, fear, fear of change. Yes. Fear and of that's what, comes, that's at the root, 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 root. We could find any excuse yeah. to argue for the limitations that we have. But let's get to the root of it. Exactly. And then watch it unravel from there. And that's kind of where, you know, this idea that, like I was saying, how when I first got going in this, I felt it was be like one on one coaching and small group coaching. But now really recognizing that stepping into a speaking role and getting out to a wider audience and just really getting those messages out wider, I think, is really where my vision and passion is. And yeah, so I'm just really looking forward to moving into that bigger phase in that way, because again, going back to just being that disruptor, mm -hmm. you know, the, the world right now, I feel what we just need more of that. One of my favorite quotes is, you know, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what the world needs is more people who have come alive. And exactly. The quote I keep oh going my God, I just got goosebumps. The, 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 I'm like, this the, is a good day. So the more we help each other come alive, I think that's what's going to shift the world. That's what's going to shift oh my gosh, this whole it's toxic all up my neck. stuff that we're in. So so that that's my one. That's my real one. It's, it's, it is your one. I'm getting confirmation from you for you all up and down, chicken skin, my hair standing. So you're on to something there, girl. Thank you. That's your thing. I, I, I call that, I mean, well, I, I, I believe it's the goosebump test. You know, people say to me <laughs> as a speaker, what story should I share? I and like, how, how do I, how do I get stories I can share during my talk? Well, every day when you're walking around the world, if you have something that gives you goosebumps, that's a story you should be sharing. Well, There's I don't even know what your story is, but whatever that, the, 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 the road that the path that you're saying that you want to be on right now, that's your path. What your story is, I don't know, but. That's well, your avenue. when I say that too, at least I don't mean just like I'm using it in that context of as a yeah. speaker. That's a story to share. But to me, oh, I took say, it literally. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, it, when when somebody says, "Okay, what's my book title?" and you say, "Well, here's my idea. What do you think?" and if they get goosebumps, it might not necessarily be your book title, but you're on the right path. Like I think it's the goosebump test. Anytime I get goosebumps or somebody goes gets tears from something you say, you may make make a note of that. Because that's something, whether it's, again, your elevator pitch, whether it's your book, mm -hmm. whether it's your talk. So I think that's a goosebump test. So you already passed it, Kathy. Yes, so for sure. We passed. For sure. <laughs> Amazing. So, Kathy, as we start to wind down, um, 
I guess tell us uh, first I, a little bit about uh, before we, because uh, we always ask how we can learn more and all that kind of good stuff. But in terms of working with you, you know, after all you shared about who would work with you and, and the kind of work that you do, but what does that look like? If somebody says, I'm at that stage, I'm ready, I'm listening to what Kathy's saying, and I'm ready to jump in, uh, is that um, like, do they meet with you for a discovery call? Do they reach out, just reach out and say, hey, I'm interested? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, exactly. So I've got my discovery call, which is, you know, we just get together on Zoom and have a chat about where they're at, what they're feeling, what they think they're like, again, that kind of where are you at is the big part of it. And where did you want to be or where do you think you want to be? Because again, most women haven't let themselves even begin to imagine what they actually want. And so, so yes, my programs go from one month, three month and six month. So of course the one month is really just kind of a, okay, let's get a, a good grip on where you're at now and start creating that vision that we're moving towards and start a roadmap in place. But of course in one month, that's kind of where you can get to. And so my three month and six month programs are much deeper into, okay, let's really get to this now and not just put a path and start doing things, but really also giving that support and that community to do that. And again, one of the things I just find that most women don't have someone in their life that they can really, really, really be honest with. You know, again, back to how they're feeling and what they really want. Most of us don't really have that person. We have people that that, that love and care about us, but they don't really want to hear, again, you know, back to being angry right. and frustrated. And like, who in your life wants to really know all that stuff coming out of you, right? So just part of it is really giving that community that space for people to really be honest about how they're feeling. I mean, I'm that person that they can just let it all out, say, okay, what are you really feeling? What do you really want? And then, you know, giving them that support going forward through that. So that three month, we can make some really great progress and make some big changes. But again, most of us find that we tend to slip back into our old life when we don't have that ongoing support. So really, that six month is really what gets you into making that lifestyle change, making that real change and that shift in how you're thinking and what you're feeling and and owning your new identity. Because I find for so many of us, that's really what a, a, a huge part of the stumbling and what holds us stuck is mm -hmm. the identity. Like, who am I? You know, we have so many things about who am I that making a shift into something that's different than what people see you as or knew you as or or kind of that, you know, that going from Clark Kent to Superman, you know, people know Clark Kent is Clark Kent and they're not going to believe he's Superman. Right. So so that's really where the six month really comes in, is that you have that time and have that support to really take on that and own that new identity. So. So, well, again, so much of it is just really about allowing, stepping into supporting. <laughs> so I, I love that you one of the things you said a couple of times and I want because I wanted to when you said it the first time I was thinking about it and then I wanted to, you know, mention something the second time around, since you did mention it again, I think it's the universe saying I need to mention this, but in our house, I mean, I'm kind of joking with this, but because it really isn't a four letter word, but anger is not a four letter word in our house, meaning like we're okay with emotions, but mm -hmm. it's funny because last night, this is what reminded me of it. Last night, our son was going through the emotions of like, whenever I'm happy, I go, and I forget what he said, like whenever, I forget what his, his comment was for happy. But anyway, he goes, and then when I'm angry, I go, Arr! but the thing is, he is angry. He's like four and a half. So he's like a teenager. He gets angry at times. And he says, I'm angry and it's allowed. But whenever I was growing, and I don't, I won't even speak for my house because my I was raised by a single mother and it was a bit different. I was allowed to have more emotions, yeah, I think, yeah. than some people. But people I knew that had a mother and father, maybe the father was real gruff and, you know, boys never cry type thing and all that. They weren't allowed to actually say, I feel angry. They, you know, at most they were told, go out back and beat up something with a hammer. But they weren't told they were allowed to say it or feel it. But our son, like, we talk him through it. He says, I'm angry. I'm really mad right now. I'm mad at you. Like last night we went to the movies. And he went to Mamie's house and she she wasn't happy because it's her grandson. She, he was at the window for about a half hour before he got home saying, they're taking too long. Where are they at? And he wouldn't leave the window. And so she felt sad that he was like that. But anyway, we got home. He, we got a lashing. Like, I think he was going to ground us. Like, I'm angry. 
long. I'm angry. He doesn't know we're at the movie watching Spider-Man or he'd be really angry. But my <laughs> point is, is that it's allowed, right? Like we don't say, you're not allowed to be angry with us. We're the parents. No, he was angry. Like yeah. he said, when we get home, I'm going to have a talk to you. But shift that over to a girl, though, like for boys, boys were supposed to at least show some anger and have some aggression for girls and women. We're not supposed to be angry. We're not supposed to be, you know, have those emotions. So well, and again, especially she's. Yeah, to I, I was told you are yeah that I didn't have the luxury to feel sorry for myself. Yeah. That was uh, that was the quote. You don't wow. have the luxury to feel sorry for yourself. And like, even now I'm like, I hear it. And the little girl in me still does a little, mm. but the adult was like, that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> like it no, made no. perfect sense. And it formed my whole, you know, belief system or my relationship with my emotions. But like, you don't have the luxury to feel sorry for yourself. Yeah. So and I, I was always a middle that. child too. So with the, as a middle child, I, I always took on that role of being the one that needed to, to level the boat when it was rocking. So if the boat was uh -huh. rocking for any reason, I needed to be the one to step in and smooth things out, right? So I had to be that kind of that grounded, smooth patient. I mean, it, I've developed a lot of great traits like that that are very useful. Well, I can, I feel it from you. I feel that smooth, balanced yeah. vibe. Exactly. So but, you've definitely perfected it. <laughs> but sometimes I just feel angry. Sometimes I'm a disruptor. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so Elise, I have, to, I have, to, I just got to ask you that quote. Sure. Because I'm trying to, does that quote mean that um, you have nothing to complain about? Is that what that means? Like, in other words, you you know, you should be For grateful me, you have nothing to complain so about? Or I can tell you how I interpreted it as a small child was that I didn't really have a right, that I, that I, that I think what it was being told to me is that I don't have the luxury. Well, first of all, you don't have the luxury to feel sorry for yourself, which means, no, that I don't have everything that I want, right? Because I don't have the luxury, right? I don't have time to just sit back and feel sorry for myself. But at the same time, I just took it as that there was something wrong with me having these emotions. Like, I shouldn't even have them because there's no time for it. So yeah. then my little girl, there's no time for you, right? And that's probably why I've spent, I'm dedicated, dedicate my entire life to helping people recognize that they are priceless and that they matter and to create experiences for them in their life or help them create their own experiences life in life and that, that they, they do matter. And they do right? have the luxury. And, and they do. Yes. I mean, it's all part of, and tapping into that is a guidance system. They're actually now like a, a human without a compass, right? A ship without a compass. But if you take your emotions and you allow them to guide you and you follow your gut, now you're operating in this world with, with, and being guided from your higher self. So I feel like I, I, I knew it and I was intuitive enough to consistently be with it. Now I've tapped in and I can, you know, really tap in, but allowing people to use that emotion as, as a guidance for themselves, like you're doing with your kids, like being able to say, I'm angry, not yeah. getting angry. There's a difference between acting yeah. out in anger and then saying, I'm angry. Right. And That's if someone's true. angry, it's them recognizing that either their boundaries have been crossed in some way or they feel betrayed. So your son felt a little, maybe both, but he's a, learning to express it. And now he can use that to guide him. But when you're cut off from that, a lot of people, when you're cut off, it's like you're floundering or buffering. Yeah. You're right, though. I mean, there's two different things. Like what we work on, too, though, is he's also angry at AJ, his younger brother, who can't even talk yet. And he says, he destroys my fun. <laughs> That's his wording. He destroys my fun. So then, like, he, like he'll go and, like, push him over. So, like, he's... he's He's acting on it too. So that's a whole separate right, thing. So two different things. You can say that you can be angry that he's taking away your fun, but let's find a, but pushing him is not going to bring your fun back. No. So like, that's the, you know, those are the kind of conversations like, well, what, you know, is that really that fun? That would, now it's over. Not so fun anymore. That's right. <laughs> but they were like, so I, yeah, so I, I totally, I'm glad you said that at least because there are two different things there. And mm -hmm. so Kathy, as we bring things to a close, I mentioned that I, I promised to come back. And as you've probably seen with this experience, Experience. It's different than the rest of the Blue Talks experiences. We like to just have a conversation and see where it goes. And I think what it does, though, is it gets people to know you, know, like, and trust you, know your work, 
know the type of thing you do more so than even if we just talked about your company the whole time. Oh, uh, definitely. It's, it's more of a human experience. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. the other part is we always like to make sure they know how to reach you if they want to connect later. And I'm already thinking of somebody I might connect you with. But um, where would they go? Where's the hub or where would you send them if they want to reach out further? Well, my website's got all kinds of information about my programs and what I'm working on and quick links to my calendar and that sort of thing. And it's just inspiredtenacity.com. LinkedIn is where the social media that I'm on the most. So that's the definitely the best place to connect with me there. Um, I am also on other things, but don't spend a lot of time there. So definitely my website and LinkedIn are the two best places to find and me. And I just uh, responded to your request. Oh, perfect. Thank I think you. I got one from you, right? Right before yeah, you yeah. came on. on. Facebook yep. and LinkedIn, I sent you this morning. <laughs> yeah, so we're connected. I didn't get my Amazing. Facebook. Well, email. and at least it's an hour behind me. So it's funny because uh, you're in, in BC, correct, yep. today, Kathy? So yes. you're three hours behind at least. Just after so like, 11 this morning, yes. Yeah, so she's like mid-afternoon. I'm like end of the day almost. And yeah. Wait, where are you? Can you? On the West Coast. Oh, okay. Canada. Yeah, so I, I, I told thought you me. said DC. I was like, oh, that's three no. hours behind. No, no. <laughs> no, BC. So it's uh, we had two Canadians on and two uh, US uh, guests as well. So two American and two Canadian, and Lise is American and I'm Canadian. So we had a perfect balance day. Three we got three. the 50 50 today, absolutely perfect. perfect. Kathy, I would rec recommend that you go into the comments too below and just put in your contact information so people who do go back and watch the archive or the watch the replay will be able to find you as well. And this will be posted on, so it's on LinkedIn and Facebook and where else are we? YouTube. So uh, we're on YouTube, LinkedIn, and then about eight, maybe eight or 10 platforms on Facebook, or I should mm -hmm. say pages, different groups and pages. So we're all over the place. Uh, so I know in your meeting for going for comments, uh, the main two I would look to, uh, well, other than LinkedIn would be my own profile page. And this is for everybody else watching too. So or the flip your script. Yeah. The flip your script group page as well. Yeah. Come and hop on and join that. It's called the blue, it's called blue talks, flip your script experience. Yeah. Yeah. I'm on there. I was swear I was listening to you guys this morning. <laughs> yeah, uh, I see it. Amazing. Amazing. So Kathy, like I said, this has been an absolute pleasure. Um, going to let you go and, and let you run, but thank you so much for joining us today. And then just let everybody else know, uh, then Elisa and I, if Lisa's cool with this, we'll just take one minute to wind down and we'll both run. Yep. I know we're and then I got to go. I got to get out, get on the river. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. And Wednesday I'm on co-hosting with you. Yes. So, yes. so I'll see you so, back on Wednesday. Amazing. I'm super stoked for that. This is a, a new thing this week, a new twist. They have different co-hosts, so I'm excited to have that happen. I'll be behind the scenes. Yeah, uh, I'm curious to see how that's going to happen too, Corey. I well, can't wait to meet everyone, but it's we'll going to be fun. new. <laughs> well, and, and oh, are you, is, are you going to be on together? Yes. Yeah. On oh, Wednesday. Okay, well, now I know you, so that's good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know if I – it's just new. I don't know. We'll figure yes. it out. Yes. Well, and, and – the benefit is if people notice that sometimes they're seeing me and I'm looking down, if I'm, it's like, I'm, I'm actually answering messages about this, how I'm trying to get on. And so I'm answering those questions. So now I can do that behind the scenes oh. and also do a whole bunch of more sharing. So we're going to see how it goes. It's, it's a trial run. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Kathy, right now I'm sharing too. And I'm looking down. There you go. So, <laughs> uh, so Kathy, thank you so much. You're an absolute gem and yes, you'll be back on Wednesday. So okay. we'll see you back here in two days. Thank you. See you all.